happy to say all the chance you can get. Zero, 26 up. job is to manage, ma yes, besides getting shined in the face with a flashlight, um, <laughs> managing contacts for our fine officer of the deck here, Lieutenant Van Olst. Um, my name is Neil Greenland, uh, Lieutenant, Supply Officer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I might gain, regain night vision again uh, sometime tomorrow after having that bright flashlight shine in my face. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Um, Roll Tide. Go Gators. Where are you from? I am from Pearson, Florida, a small town west of Daytona Beach. <coughs> yes. I went to University of Florida, sporting the uh, Rock and the Gator visor here, which is my uh, on watch on watch it's signature. Watch it's my watch cap. People wear personalized hats. Oh yeah, why why do you guys why do you guys need to wear different ball caps? Um it's uh I guess this is a sub thing. It is a sub thing. Yeah it's a sub thing. Um generally we're embarked. We're submerged. No yeah we're submerged, no one can see. We uh it's kind of a crew morale thing, you know, surface fleet at least gets to breathe breathe fresh air and uh have a good good feel for what time of day it is, whereas uh, if we're underwater for significant amounts of time, it's just, it's just watch to watch. We don't really know what's going on, what time of day it is. We just get into our routine, so it's kind of a, it's a morale thing. What about um, the tennis shoes? Is there like a tactical reason you wear those? Actually, yes. Um, the, uh, the rubber sold uh, shoes are a little more quiet walking around. So our, our primary, the way we get caught as a submarine is noise. And you wouldn't think about it, but if, uh, if we get close to something and uh, we're running around with uh, heavy toed, heavy toed shoes, it could potentially put out a sound transit. It could uh, allow us to get picked up. What's like the craziest thing you've ever seen somebody wear? That would definitely be uh, Petty Officer Jorgensen's um, silk sleeping robe. It uh, it reminds me of uh, something Hugh Hefner would wear. What about, it's very interesting. What about as far as like hats and tennis shoes, since those are kind of like a part of your like more of your everyday uniform? Do people do people really like to jazz it up with the with the footwear and the headgear and stuff? Um, not. I wouldn't say too much. Um, you know, foot gear, it's pretty much limited to, to uh, boat shoes and tennis shoes. Um, and then the bulk of the headgear I've seen is, uh, you know, for example, my college alma mater, um, other people's favorite college or pro teams, um, and then just other, other kind of stuff people wear, I guess. Um, Are there any like official rules regarding uh, hats and shoes? Uh, like, what if I wanted to wear like a neon hat and it's like a duck bill on it? Would that be authorized? I don't know if the duck bill would be authorized. That's uh, kind of a judgment call. Um, kind of leave it up to the Master Chiefs to police that. How long have you been with the ship, sir? I checked on board July of last year. 
so from uh, July of last year to a few weeks before commissioning, so, uh, what is it? What has it been like to kind of see this ship uh, transform and you know, people kind of joining it? It's, it's, it's been an interesting process. Um, we definitely, when I first got here, you couldn't really move around anywhere very comfortably. The boat was sitting in a building on blocks. There was, for example, in a space this big, there would be 20, 30 guys working, equipment everywhere, putting the boat together. And then, you know, now we're, we're out to sea driving around. It's a fully functional warship and a, it's been it's been really neat. They uh, all the all the crazy technology and and technical details that go into building this thing. You'd never think they could turn it around that fast. But we've gone from sitting in a building with a big hole cut in our side for access for the workers to uh, now we're transiting on the surface off the coast of Florida, and it's uh, it's really cool. What do you think it'll be like after um, the ship is commissioned? I mean, I know you guys kind of had like a life cycle and you know stuff leading up to your personal limit, but do you think it'll feel any different for the crew and um, kind of like what you guys do operationally? I think we'll definitely we'll definitely feel a little more like a naval unit um, once we've got USS in front of our name as opposed to a PCU pre-commissioned unit. Um, and I think I think everyone's real excited about that, and, uh, and uh, it'll be a problem for all of us. What does it mean to you to be um, like part of this summary and be a plane commander? It really means a lot. Um, like I say, the uh, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, when they decommission the submarine, there's going to be that plaque showing uh, all the plane owners, the the first crew who ever took her to sea, and. Uh, that's that's real special for for me and and I think for everybody else too. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Anything else you want to say about the ship? Uh, just uh, go Minnesota and uh, happy to have you on board and uh, we're all really excited to uh to commission here in a few days or a few weeks and uh, be part of the real Navy. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, can you say your first and last name? Uh, it's Randy Mixon, M-I-X-O-N. Can you spell it? Can you spell it last name? Uh, M-I-X-O-N with a name. Okay. Um, what, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm currently the co-pilot, which uh, my primary job is to shift water around as we need it from tank to tank. Uh, run the ventilation system, do different things of that nature. Sure. Um, how long have you been with the ship? Uh, about a year and a half now. So where was the ship when you when you first joined the crew? Uh, it was still in the building in three pieces. Um, it was, yeah, different seeing it go from shipping around from three pieces to operating it now. Um, what are you looking forward to as far as the commissioning and uh, just being able to get out and uh, become a real submarine. I mean, we're kind of doing our job now, but it'll it'll be nice once we're out and we're, we're commissioned and go out and do good things. Is um, how many other how many other boats have you been on? Uh, three previous ones. So this is your first Virginia class. Yes. How is this different than um, your other boats? Um. It's, it's way more advanced as far as the electronics side. Um, where, where, we had, for six months, where we had a lot more valves and things that you would operate now. It's a lot more computer screens, and things of that nature. So it's, it's um, getting us a little bit more advanced. Um, well, the thing my running out of overall, for six the, knots. the boats generally act and do the same things. It's just this is way more advanced as far as the electronics side of it. Um, would you say that, like, Back in the day, you had more people doing different things, and now you have kind of like systems and machines doing things. Um, in, in some aspects, yes. Uh, others, I mean, we still have basically the same amount of people on board. Uh, Cup off.
I'm going to death moon by it. Um, so the, the jobs are still there. I mean, we still have to maintain the systems. We still have to basically oversee the systems. Uh, it's just the way we manipulate them. Uh, instead of, you know, switches and valves, a lot more of it's touch screen, that kind of stuff. So we still have to, to maintain it. So we still generally have the same amount of people. Did you guys do any um, special training to operate on this specific platform? Uh, as far as co-pilot pilot, pilot uh, yes, uh, we, we spent a lot of time, they have a Virginia trainer, and we spent a lot of time, uh, for some guys almost two years, for me about uh, almost a year in the trainers prior to coming out and even qualifying. So uh, it was kind of kind of unique coming out for a ship for the first time and actually operating it. And we were all kind of fresh at it. Uh, it was kind of different. What, did, what was the training like? like was it um, leaders? Yes, it uh, for the most part looks exactly like this, uh, except you're inside of a building, inside of a, a trainer that moves around, and we can we can simulate everything that we do here. Uh, so it's 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 very realistic uh, as far as the way that it acts and the things that it does. So we were uh, we're able to get a lot of really good training out of it. Did you um, did you feel differently kind of coming here and getting your hands on the real thing? Yeah, it's always a little bit scary because in the building, if you make a mistake, you just hit reset, and here you don't get to play, you know, don't get to push the reset button. Um, I didn't know if like we could just touch back on. The, he is in the bridge, sir. The um. Oh, well, that's your miss case on the bridge too. Troubleshooting. Very well, pilot. The importance of the pilot and co-pilot on board and the significance of what it is you guys do. Um, I mean, we are the. Uh, we maintain the ship. Uh, as far as the, the driving, you know, we, we the safety of the ship, safety of the the crew, kind of kind of relies on you know, it's relied on us. Uh, we have the officer deck that backs us up, but I mean, ultimately, if, you know, if we push the wrong button, we do the wrong thing. You know, it's it's still uh, kind of up to us. So we have a lot of immediate actions and casualties and things of that nature. So we kind of have to be on the ball. Um, if you're not paying attention, something could go bad quick. So, it's, uh, what's that like having that responsibility? It's a it's a pretty big responsibility. Um, Luckily, there's a lot of backup systems and you know a lot of people to back us up. But still, you know, there's a there's a, a lot to it. If, if a guy makes a mistake, or um, for like earlier when we were doing large angles, you know, that could very easily go wrong if somebody does the wrong thing. So it's uh, uh, the other aspect of that too is now with the auto systems, uh, you really have to be vigilant and, and, and watch because you know even though it's an autopilot or auto. You still have to pay attention to what the computer's doing. So, in some, uh, you know, used to you you were hands on everything, and now you're just kind of watching to make sure nothing goes wrong. And that can be nerve wracking sometimes. What's the best part of this job? Uh, pretty much everything. I mean, it's a it's just a good job. Not very many people get to uh, live underwater for months on end and go out and do these kind of things. So. I've been doing it for almost 25 years now, so it's not uh, not too bad. Alright. Um, what, what does it mean to you to be a plank owner? Uh, it's kind of an honor. Uh, that's another thing in the Navy. Very few people actually get to, to go through a new commissioning and you know see a, a ship go from pieces to, to an actual functioning warship. So it was, it was pretty interesting to be able to see the whole process and a you know, sense of pride that they when I'm like 90 years old they're going to be decommissioning this thing so yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of an honor to know that you were there and have your name on the, on the walls being the first guys is there anything else you'd like to add anything else you'd like to say about mighty warship Minnesota uh, she's a great ship uh, great crew uh, really happy to uh, to be a part of it Not, not always in your career do you always get the best crews. You know, there's always you know, certain crews that are not as tight or whatever, and this is a, this, this crew is really, really much well together. Especially for a pretty junior, for a junior crew that's um, 
you know, in all actuality, we don't have very much time to see together. And a lot of the guys have never been to see other than on here. So uh, they're all doing real well about learning and training. And, and happy to be here. Zero two four down. Zero about planes. Zero about planes up. Five five zero feet. Two six down. About plane zero. Six hundred feet. Pull up. Pull up point. Ten rise. Ten rise up. About planes ten rise. Six five zero. Six five zero. Stack on our depth, 200 feet. What are you doing with the sign? Hey, what are you ready to do with the sign? inventive, I thought.
Cosby took part. Video, it's video. Oh, no. Ooh, now it looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you were dancing on TV in Minnesota too. That's true.
Attention and control designated Romeo 2A to contact and concern. There it is. There you go. Bam. He's 13,457 yards away, so it's almost seven miles. Nice. I got on a plane one time coming off one of these submarines. I sat down next to a little old lady being there. 